and welcome back to Games Done Classic. My name is Lat Mackey, and this is where we look back at legendary GDQ moments with the legends that made them happen. Today's episode has been all about Kaizo and fan-made Mario games. Uh, if you're just joining us here on Twitch, yes, we are live. We are watching these things in real time with you, reliving those moments with the people that made them happen. And here's what a lot of this has been leading up to, and this is Grand Pooh World 2, uh, run by Mitch Flower Power, but <laughs> with on the couch, I think the couch is kind of important to mention in this run because the creator of the game, once again, is on the couch getting a chance <laughs> to make commentary and stuff like that um thanks all for coming back here and in watching this again I, I, the first question has to be uh, you know uh, Pooh, what does it feel like to have a game named after you <laughs> how cool is that <laughs> uh i mean it 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 is it is really cool because i mean just for the the idea of like you know playing seeing drams run right and then i play a game named after dram and then later on, a game named after me is being played there. That is a very, um, you know, you have a, a a full circle moment, I guess. And uh, it, it, it is very, very cool. And I, I'll never, what do I want to say? I'll never not be humbled by that. Just the idea of that happening. Yeah, it's, it's, beyond, it's very much beyond my wildest dreams. You know what I mean? No. So, I, I guess if, for those who don't know, and I, I can't imagine anybody doesn't at this time, but let's just set the stage a little bit. Who created this game, and you know wh what makes this game so unique and different to things we had seen before, as far as Kaizo and fan-made games up to this point? Your run, Mitch. Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's okay. Okay, uh, it's <laughs> it's made by Barb, actually, uh, Barbarous King. Um, and this this hack is just like it it leads on after Grand Pool World One. Um, I think it's like a, a separate island, right? Close. Yeah. To the same like island. Escape, yeah. It like uh, there's loose lore mm -hmm. that Barb claims doesn't exist, but definitely <laughs> exists. It definitely exists in in his hack. But yeah, it's like it's like you you escape the island from Mario from Grand Pool World One on a. Oh, look at that freestyle move right there, man. I've <laughs> never done that before. That's like the, G, the GDQ. early GDQ mess up, you know what I mean? Like the nerves mess up, and then you still always. saved it. Yeah, you saw us all react in the back, too. Um, yeah, it's like you're, you're, you get on a boat at the end of Grand Pooh World 1, and then the boat crashes into the Grand Pooh World 2 island, and that's, that's the lore. And um, yeah, and then you yeah. go about your business, yeah. So essentially, like, what makes it different too is that he's actually flooded it with some very unique custom things um and i'm not a super mario world guy so i don't know if these are custom things that he invented with his you know with the team or anything you know that's besides the point but what's interesting is like how he created his bosses when the bosses are introduced and the gimmicks of the levels that he uses these custom custom things with and it just makes it such a memorable thing and like Pooh was saying the the non lore that he says isn't there that totally is there because Grand Pool 3 is coming, right? And he's like, <laughs> even the secrets and the way he does is, he's yeah. got like some Dark Souls things going on with the way you like, you know, and his map, and you can see Grand Pool World 1 like on the edge of the map, you know? Don't yeah. listen to Barb. Yeah, like on the overworld, you can see the overworld of Grand Pool World once. So you know, Mario didn't even make it that far on his boat. <laughs> and then, like, even for, even for the teaser for Grand Pool World 3 he's put out, it's like, it's like Mario's fat. He has a beard, and he's like in like, like in the snowy land. Yeah, so it's like it's like this lore that he says, claims doesn't exist, but totally ex he's he's got lore in his mind that exists. He just I think he doesn't want to say it because then it would ruin the lore I have in my mind or the lore we all are making up. You know, which yeah, is, I, is I so, like how he lets us all. It is. It's just very. Interpret it's, our way. It is very very cool. And and um, but something that like Grand Pool World, I just to like extrapolate on Mitch saying like something that makes this like so cool too is it you can tell the um this is in a po not just a post dram world um era of Kaizo Rom hacks um which like I, I do really think like dram world was the beginning of playable Kaizo Rom hacks and like getting people to like really love them and fall in love with them because a lot of people d definitely fell in love with dram world after that but this is the post Dram World uh, led to Invictus, um, and Invictus was made by Juz Cook, and that brought a lot of uh, what we call chocolate um, features 
Um, so things that aren't in the vanilla game, um, essentially, that are hard-coded in by creators for... Oh, I forgot you were going for this, Mitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in this run, Mitch is going for a strat that's just, like, stupid <laughs> difficult. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sure that. someone else has done this, but up to this point, Mitch had been the only one that did this. God, it would have been so cool. <laughs> it's so silly. Dude, if it would have worked, that would have been so good. I, I feel like getting so to hype. this point was still cool, but like I got the bad cycle, so it's like... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mitch, you mentioned this, and I, I'm, I, this question is actually for Panga. Panga, you know, uh, was there anybody else involved in the making of your of uh, Super Drum Roll besides you? Uh, no major people, but uh, Kaiserman, the, the person that tasked it, he helped me with just some like minor quality of life things. The, you know, we, Barb is definitely the, the, the reason this game exists, but you mentioned a team. And so, you know, there's custom yeah. music. There are these custom ideas. You know, what, what are we seeing in, in, in these Kaizo games at this point? Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's kind of what, what I was given, like the post-Invictus world. Like um, now at this point, people are putting a lot of ASM code and, and um, easy to implement features up on SMW Central. Um, we're getting uh before where kaizo man was like the only one you could go to now there's you know three four five people that are adding things in all the time and and um and just putting it up there for free and uh you know barb barb's playing a lot of rom hacks throughout this time and he's taking like oh i see this little this one little thing that was using this one little level this other hack this can make a whole level out of this you know what i mean um and he's he's while while he definitely tries to keep it and I don't want to speak for him or anything. It did, but it definitely, mm. obviously, he's trying to keep it very vanilla. Um, he definitely adds in some chocolatey features when it's fun. He, like, um, he, he's yeah. so good at making chocolate vanilla, if that makes yes. sense. Yes. Right? He's yeah. like, like I know in Grand Portal 3, he's making something like bubble level, but I know it's going to feel natural when I play yeah. it. But it's gonna be hard, but it'll feel natural. It's weird. Yeah, he he does he does a really good job of of making like they don't feel like they weren't in the original game. They feel like they're things that would like naturally be in a sequel, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is is really really exciting. Like nothing's just like jarring out of nowhere. It all fits into the universe, which is very hard um, to do. But I I also it also like I mean he spent years. Well, over a year. you know, yeah, I, know two, I think I think it was like a year and a half maybe on this just making this game and that, a lot of time. I think I think his overall like creation time was close to two thousand hours on this game alone. He also um, messed yeah. up the release date too. Remember, it was supposed to come out I think in a on a in a February or March or something, right? And he had to extend it by a month. I think. Which I which I was really glad he did because I had my baby. My first day back actually on stream was the day this came out. So it's really funny because <laughs> Barb was going to release Planned. it like. Planned. Yeah, dude, I was going to release it like a, a, a week, like a week after I had my kid. And I was like, I was like, dude, you're, you're killing me on this, man. Cause you know, I like, you can't not play this game named after me, you know? And I just had a baby and thankfully he gave me, he gave me three weeks. Yeah. He gave me an extra couple weeks. So, um, shout, shout out to him. I, I, you know what? He says he didn't do that because of my baby, but I like to believe he's just a really nice guy and did do that. This is why he doesn't me, give so. us lore. Cause we all believe. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> I know. I, I shout out to him. I, I, I'll always believe he cares. He cared enough about me and my child to do that. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, Pooh, because they're as close as I think we can get to in our community. This felt like a AAA release almost. It seemed like mm -hmm. everyone who streams or speedruns fan made and Kaizo games were definitely playing this game when it came out, and everyone mm -hmm. was trying to break it at the same time. I mean, it just it seemed like the, the entire Mario community was playing this game. And so, I'm, first of all, how'd you avoid any spoilers? But then, secondly, did you have that? It seemed like a community experience, like everyone was playing it. Definitely a community experience, and I mean, I was lucky that I wasn't like the. I think Mitch, Mitch, and Glitch Cat and Penga. You, I mean, talk about community experience. Oh, they had a night. night where they did a group stream to figure out the final puzzle. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember and, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was that Fine was. Bowser. Yeah, and like, so I got to the puzzle. I think it was like the next day. So it was like after that, I had to be in emote only mode because the information was out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that I mean. You, that was that was very cool, you know. Like I went back later on and watched that what they were doing. That was super cool. Uh, Mitch, we've talked about throughout the entire show now about you breaking games and finding strats and things like that. Uh, what this game has, 
the la I can only say an extremely challenging puzzle towards the end of the game. Um, mm -hmm. What was your approach? What, it, it takes so much time. I feel like it's a good time to talk about now because the speedrun kind of just avoids the whole thing. So <laughs> what exactly happens towards the end of this game and how do you find how to beat it? So, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to spoil any of the puzzles, but I think everyone in the community had actually stumbled upon something on their own first. So mm -hmm. there was a part of the puzzle like the... Um, the, what was it, the anagram, right? I didn't even yeah. know, I didn't even find that. But what I had found was uh, Pooh's portrait, but nobody had found Pooh's portrait. So I was, caught, I was caught in a situation, I had messaged Barb too, and I was like, I don't know what to do because nobody's found Pooh's portrait, but do I stream? Because if I stream, then everyone's going to say that, right, I found it, and then, yeah. then Panga would be forced to know and stuff. So we actually just decided to come together and, and work together, and we just, we just work from there, right? Yeah, it was something like that. Like we were the first three to beat the game, and mm -hmm. thankfully, and we did the, it together. Yeah, thankfully, like the people that play tested, they they didn't spoil anything. They may they might have given subtle hints, but uh, we spent maybe like four fourish hours. I remember because I, I stayed up until like eight a.m. trying to trying to find them with these guys. Yeah, well, to put it in context, essentially what it was is like everyone found little bits and pieces, um, and where we all came together on a new experience was when we hit the escape room. We experienced, we went into the, skate, the escape room all together at the same time. And we waited for each other. I think I was actually the last one because I couldn't freaking oh, yeah. beat the, Cause yeah, you guys waited for like an hour because I couldn't get back to the escape room because I was trying I to beat the that, level. Yeah. yeah, so, and then we all entered it together and it wasn't the end. And we didn't yeah, know was, that. It was far from the end. <laughs> yeah. It, it felt like the end, end. Was, there was so much more. Right, so like, so we're looking around the escape room. Panga's like, "Well, I found a spring here. What's this?" So we all go and we all look at the spring, right? And then we're all in the other room. We're like, "Well, what does this mean?" And then, yeah, that was really had, cool. Had any other uh, Kaizo or Fami games like like had that in a game before, or is this one of the first times you've seen that? I'm curious. Mm, like this, the first time for sure. There's there's Kaizo hacks out there that have um, like inside one level is like a crazy puzzle i'm pretty sure i think it doesn't kaizo 3 yeah. have that like a ship room or whatever it's like a lot of back and forth so i can't remember but these guys would know more than me no yeah there's there's been like like normal like in-game mario puzzles like kaizo 3 has a really famous one but nothing like this one where it was kind of like in a in an escape room style and and then this goes back to the you know what we were talking about with like building things specifically for for people I'm obsessed with escape rooms and Barb knew that. And so that was one of the reasons why I put it in there. And even to the point, not to do any spoilers, but one of the codes is actually my birthday with that one of the final codes that you get. And so that's just, that's like such like a detail of like when I, when I found that detail out, I like broke down. I like broke down because like, that's so special. Like that to me, that's like such a special little thing that Barb put in and, um, you know, I I always joke that like Barb, Barb's not an emotional guy. He's the type of guy that, you know, spends two thousand hours building. He has building a cat. It. He's emotional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he spends. He spends. He'll never. He'll never tell you. He'll never tell you that he loves you. He shows you by giving you an, a, a video game and putting in a super special puzzle that he knows you love. You know what I mean? Like, and and then when you say thank you, he'll be like, "Oh, shut the fuck up." You know what I mean? That's just the type of guy he is. You know, he's 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 an incredible thoughtful guy and i think i think you see that in his level design and also just you know the fact that he would do something like that you know i do have to uh, say it's a pretty cool mechanic yeah. that the way that you have to beat the game is to stalk the, uh, the person who it's named after I just but that's a, it's a nice point <laughs> yeah well I, I didn't i didn't even realize it you know what's funny is i did it and i didn't even realize it was my birthday because i was so excited i was progressing and so it wasn't until after i passed bowser that he was like hey i don't know if you noticed but uh, that was your birthday. And I went back and looked at my notes and I was like, holy F, you know, like, <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Uh, Pick. I'm curious yeah. about your first playthrough of this game because you're uh, at this point, Dram and Dram Two had been done and created, and you're still playing these games. Uh, what was like your experience seeing a game on this kind of scale and this kind of level uh, uh, for you on your first playthrough? Uh, not gonna lie, I was taking notes on the side. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, the, the, the first playthrough, I remember, I was I was just playing it and I was like, wow, this is uh, pretty good, and I can see Barb's um, like. His his creativity and his like his uh, his style. Since most people that create hacks as one of them, we, we all have a specific type of style. And 
for my style, I like to inspire my level design from others. So as I played, I just kept thinking to myself, hmm, th these are some cool ideas that maybe I could potentially use in another one if I want to make. And I That's what it's very about, much, man. Yeah, I very much en enjoyed it. It had a good difficulty because it wasn't too hard, it wasn't too easy. And then when we got to the lore part, I was just thinking to myself, maybe I could maybe I could do lore as well. But no. I definitely saw a difference in the way you played this versus the way I've watched you play other hacks and even Mario Maker levels. There, there is a slight difference in like how I feel like how you enjoyed it when you played it. You were more prone to like waking up, let's go, you know. I don't know how many hours and then stopping and then then starting again. So. Oh yeah, for some reason I I was determined to like be the first one to beat it. Mm -hmm. Just just for like a self goal. And but I mean, if you didn't enjoy it, I don't think you'd be so inclined that, yeah, to that's, be that's like that, true. right? It, it was very, yeah, it was very enjoyable. So, so, Mitch, I got to throw this at uh, you. You know, you, you you've done a lot of Super Mario Brothers three speed running in your time. You had done a, a, some Mario World stuff at this point, but um. probably not spent the <laughs> amount of time with that that you had with with <laughs> Mario three. Um, uh, what's it like playing a game like this? You know, that's that's kind of different from your normal thing. This was a really weird run for me because I'm not a Super Mario World guy, but I had I had been running this since it came out, and then uh, Panga was going in insane. So at the, the very start, I think it was Panga and I who was throwing back and forth in the high 50 minutes for yep. the world record, and like I, he just couldn't give me a break, and I think the <laughs> Mario 3 part of me kind of came out and was like, if it took me a week to get it and then he got it in the day, that would be, I obviously wouldn't be mad at him, but I'd be frustrated and like, am I not that good? So I don't know, it just pushed me, right? It's like, he, he was always able to just beat the record in like an hour after I got it or something. So we would just toss it back and forth. So I don't know, it just, it's just like, I don't know, it's just kind of how it works. I guess that would work for any game if we all played them just the way you perceive yeah. it. I was gonna say the first like three months, I think, or like six or seven different people had the record at different points and i think three of us had all three records at different points mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah i was i was more yeah, so Pango referring was, to I think the, Pango, the 50 minute yeah. mark when we hit that yeah i think Pango was the first one to get uh all three categories all at once yeah um, no, and, and Pango then, never sticks and then i was yeah then so i was, like, was, I was like oh i want to do that you know so <laughs> yeah and it just yeah it it, it it was it was definitely a uh a long, a long war, I'd say, uh, that went through summer between, I mean, to Noble Tofu was in it. Um, I mean, just so many, so many players um, that were I just was, going ham. I was really shocked when I, when I got this run in GDQ. So I was, so I assumed that when they went through the verification process, I was the one who had the record at the time, I'm, I would guess, but because I wasn't a Super Mario World guy, I was always, I always felt like I didn't earn my in you know, because like all these guys, are like they're, they're just so good at Super Mario World. And then I was, I was like kind of new to it. So this run was very stressful for me because I felt like if I didn't do good, I didn't earn it. So like I overstressed and like overpracticed. It, it was dumb the amount. I think the day play. the list came out, you had this category. Panga had bad ending, and I mm -hmm. had 100%. And I mm -hmm. think that's what it was. And I think that's what we all submitted to, which is funny. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if you haven't yet, do yourself a favor and watch this run at some point with the commentary because Barb and Pooh and uh, the, the commentary is who I forget who else is on the couch. I can't see Tofu. it in this small tofu. There we go. Uh, it, it's really insightful and behind the scenes. But there is something that we just saw, and I'm not. I'm curious if things like this had been done up at this point. Like your controls got reversed. Had we seen that in a in a, in a Mario World game before? I think that's been in a hack before. I don't think this is brand new, right? Uh, you want to um, say? I'm sure it's yeah, I'm sure. I, I don't think any. I, I outside of the bosses, I'm pretty sure none of this is like, you know, was brand new made for the hack. Um, like the ASM patches, they're all things that. Uh, and I could be wrong about this. That's something we, you know, Barb can answer obviously a lot better than us. Um, but I'm pretty sure all of it was stuff he saw in other smaller hacks. He, he, I mean, to Barb's credit. Uh, just like Panga gets inspired, he he plays a tremendous amount of ROM hacks. He really, really does. He's played mm -hmm. way more, significantly more than I ever have. And he he definitely gets inspired and takes notes. And he and when something like really catches his eye, I think he he you know thinks about putting it in a, another level later on. 
So, Mitch, coming from, you mentioned that you hadn't done a lot of Mario World stuff. Uh, what are the things that really uh, make this game challenging for you then as a runner? Uh, swapping between spin jump and not spin jump and uh, <laughs> getting comfortable with re-grabs. I did, I did do a lot of work with Super Dram World, so I got uh, comfortable with stuff like that, but I never even came close to taking it serious like this. So um, when I got my run in, I sort of had like a panic attack because I didn't know if I could comfortably get good at this game with the skill level in the in the amount of time that you know I had. You only have a couple months once you get accepted or whatever. Um, so yeah, the swapping on the D-pad, getting you because the the SNES controller is kind of dog bonish, the NES controller square. So my little finger, what do you want to call them, like rivets that you get from your controller, they're different. So it's yeah, it, it was it was a rough go. I gotta ask. I, I've heard this term a lot, and I, now I know what it is. But it took me a while. What exactly is a regrab? And it's one of those things that seems to make Mario World somewhat unique in what it does. Regrab is so it has a weird name because it has nothing to do with what Mario is <laughs> actually doing. It's what you're doing with your fingers, and it, essentially what it is is when you jump in the air, Mario will fall slower or faster depending if you're holding the jump button while you're falling after you jumped. So in certain situations in Mario hacks, you want to jump. And then at a precise time, you want to re-grab the jump button while you're falling to make a certain jump. That would really only work if you do the re-grab. And uh, Mario 3 doesn't have anything like that. Not even close. Mm -mm. Well, Super Orb Bros does. One of the things uh, as a viewer I've noticed about this game is like how many levels and kind of how all of them are punishing. <laughs> and I wondered if that plays into making the, because uh, you mentioned, we've all mentioned, like th there's not a ton of RNG in this game. It's a lot about just being on your game for the whole thing. This game seems quite long. It's been up way longer than what we saw in Dram World. Yeah. And does it's that play into the difficulty? I mean, it's extreme. Yeah, it's, a, it's got a lot of levels. Um, they're all really good. Some of the levels are really, really long levels too. Um, but I mean, I think like because it's so fair, it's 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 weird. It's, it's definitely not easy. It's not an easy game, but like there's nothing that's like, say, as hard as like Dram's butthole in it. You know what I mean? All the levels are definitely levels that you could one shot, you know, 80 He's got like a reputation the to yeah. the way he designs as well. If he made something like Dram's butthole, people, people weren't expecting something like that from him. So I feel like he wouldn't have done that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, well, he's just it, it's, but it it is it is just long. It is a very long run, and the um, that's part of what makes it such a difficult Kaizo speed run is that it's very long. I mean, even after even after you defeat the last boss, which is an incredibly difficult boss, and let's say you one shot it, well then you have uh, an escape portion, which is. You know, it's not I mean, compared to everything you've done is is incredibly easy, but it's still a very difficult escape portion, and you're in a situation where you know you might be on a world record pace with your heart beating after you just did an incredibly difficult fight. It's it's uh, it does feel like it keeps on going. You know, I remember even saying that when I when I played the escape the first time, I was just like, it's not over. You know, right? Um, yeah. Well, speaking of it not being over, uh, here's what I think. Is this the first mini boss in the game or the first, you know, halfway boss? Like this is, I've never mm -hmm. seen anything like this. This is really cool seeing something like this. What's going on with this boss? Like it's kind of out of his world. Chuck Norris. <laughs> yeah, charging Chuck Norris. Uh, how many hits? Uh, none of us had, yeah, none of us had ever seen anything like this no, when we first no, played no, this no. boss. Yeah, this is I, I, a very yeah. custom boss. Yeah. I think, I think Kaizo Mammy did, right? Yeah. I think Kaizo Man did make this, and the final boss as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, this blew my mind the first time I saw this. Yeah, so this kind of shows you the, the post-Dram era where people are starting to mix chocolate with vanilla since this guy is in the original game, but what he does is completely new and it's refreshing. Yeah, exactly. And as, as they said, like, Kaizo Man made this, so it's like now rom hacks are getting to the point where you want to get a couple people kind of on your team i guess it, it would be a good way to put it so that you can you can make some of the ideas that that barb wouldn't be able to do or like if there's any custom music and stuff like that like the hacks nowadays are just insane. yeah i mean now now i think the it template. used to be like what's available and now it almost feels like what's your imagination want and, <laughs> right. Talk um, to Kaizo, you know, man. what do you want? Yeah, and if you're someone, and if you're someone as respected as like Barber Panga, you know what I mean? If they have an idea that they want, because you know they're, just they're the guys. such, yeah, they're considered the guys in my in my opinion, in my mind. Um, that you know anyone 
in our little community is going to bend over backwards to help with that particular project, um, well, so, which definitely helps, you know, but that didn't come, that didn't come without, you know, being, putting out amazing stuff, you know? Oh, here it is. The console crash in the run. Yeah, I was about to say, so this is, this is, so this is, he's playing on a Grim World 2 cartridge that he just had gotten. And uh, it crashed, and and the first thing I did was make sure everyone knew it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, he put his legs up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do want to ask about this because it's come up in the chat a couple of times. Are you running these games on original consoles? And yes. as you just mentioned, you absolutely are. So, I mean, first of all, this is how badly did that suck, Mitch? Would that <laughs> actually happen? Uh, I mean, I it, it did suck. Obviously, like I didn't care that it, you know. That it happened as long as we could restore it. I totally forgot that it's had the save file, right? Mario 3 back. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't have that in Mario but, 3, so. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, well, there's my run off stage. Um, <laughs> See you later. But because it kept happening, that's when I got really scared. I was like, it's either the cartridge, and if it's the cartridge, we can't continue, right? Because that's that's how it is. That's how we do things at GDQ, which is good. Um, but it turned out to be the Super Nintendo, so thank goodness. Who, who, I can't out. remember who knew actually that there was a different version type for the console. Like it, it wouldn't work with one console or not. Like who was aware of that? I don't think anyone actually knew. I, I think, think Bart was just like, "Yo, what if it's the SNES?" <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody. I don't, I don't think we're uh, the, the uh, what we were. The only other logic we were, or the only other solution we had was we were going to grab like another cart or like a an SD card or something that had like one of ours that had a full save file on it so Mitch could just go back oh nice That's to smart. that level and and play if he wanted but I mean that that would have that would have you know taken away some like overworld animation yeah so with fun. the version differences that we experienced with other hacks as well um is that Barb had two different versions one where like the Bowser was kind of like broken and like I was so nervous for this run I was like Barb man you gotta let me run on the the original version so I can just like He's Bowser, and he's like, "No, man, you got it." I was like, "No, I can't do it. I'm just, I'm too nervous, man. I can't, I can't handle it." He's like, "Yeah, you'll be fine." And uh, I was so scared. Sure enough, I, you know, I was fine. I ended up doing well, pretty good. I think that's Thank, kind of Vegas over here changing games for me, and Barb's like, "Suck it up." So yeah, yeah that's you exactly. That, people. That's uh, yeah, exactly. Run, run, made a, me think of the story. Run, run a Penga game, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, easy, easy fix. But no, well, I, I, I remember specifically asking him like, if if it would be a bad idea or if, you know, whatever. But he he really didn't want Bowser to be cheese live for this, and I respect that. Uh, that's a, something I think kind of important and interesting, though, is that uh, quite often you're not playing on your own consoles or your own hardware. Um, there are many different consoles that GDQ has available to them and everything, and quite often they want specific looks and things like that. So it's interesting that, you know, you're not playing on your Super Nintendo. This is GDQ's Super Nintendo. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing you get is, like, your weapon, right? Your controller. That's yep. it. Yeah. And, and I, mean, not to, that, I mean, not to add, like, to anything, but the whole... Like speedrunning is such a like repetition thing. So when you're up there sitting in a chair that's not your chair, playing on a TV that's not your normal TV, not your in size, a room that's not, not your, your normal temperature, TV size. right? Like Yeah, like all, you know, a different length away from the TV, different lights in your face, like all those things when what you're doing is is, you know, something that you is based in repetition and everything being the same every time. That is, it's actually really hard. And I think that's that's always going to be like this underlying um, difficulty factor in every single marathon run that people, well, every single live marathon run, I guess right now it's totally non-existent, but um, yeah, every single live marathon run that like this this under, underrated thing um, that makes it just that much more difficult. And, and especially in Kaizo games where you want to do everything down to the pixel every single time, um, it really yeah. adds to it. Yeah. I am... I, um, I actually wonder if you guys would agree with me that my biggest thing um, is the not my headphones. I don't know oh why. Oh, God, just, I hate it. That's that's my thing. I, like, they're, they're heavy. the GDQ headphones the GDQ aren't bad or anything. It's just it's not mine, right? And that's that's the point you were trying to make. Like, you're, yeah. you're out of your zone. And for me, it's the, the headphones for sure. Yeah. I, they sound I'm, different. There's people mm -hmm. talking in your head. They're heavy. They have those big old wires on them. The headphones are actually kind of hard to deal with. 
I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, as a speedrunner, if I see an enemy move slightly different, it's like a big deal. And I, one of my GDQ runs, uh, the screen pops, you know, turns off. And like, you know, it's funny how we have to think through some of those things because that's not, that's so abnormal. But you're just, just by sitting on that couch or sitting on that chair, you know, you're in a, an environment that is not normal to the way you're so used to your repetition existing. So that's yeah, such a really good and point. Like, being at GDQ, if you're if you're playing any game or doing any like kind of impressive thing with game, having somebody right in front of you in your vision distracting you is like it's not that bad. But the peripheral distractions are so much bigger when it comes to speed running. Like like something just zooms in the side of your eye and that, that will mess everything up. But somebody right in front of you, like you won't probably mess up. And and when you're in a place like GDQ, you got a lot of movement going on on the left and right. So it's uh yeah, it's crazy. I there's a funny comment in chat. I do have to say that even back then before COVID and everything, they were sanitizing the headsets after every run. It was, <laughs> even back then we were still, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's take care of I, the- Like, uh, like it, honestly, and I'm not embarrassed to say this, like my nerves hit me sometimes so hard when I do GDQ runs. I specifically remember Pooh Bear after one of our runs, he's like, man, you gotta, you gotta find some deodorant or something. Cause it's just like, <laughs> it, it, it's a true thing, man. And it's, once you're up there, you're up there. You're not right. going anywhere. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's warm up there. You're nervous, you know, and it's just, this the way it is. It's, and like, I don't get like that at home. What are you talking about? Like I maybe sweat a bit, but I'm not like, you know, getting it's distracted kind of with left and right, big headphones, stinking it up, right? It's interesting to point out up until this point and even continuing after this, your run is going really well for this one, Mitch. It's one of the most impressive runs I think I've seen at a GDQ, to be honest with you. The level of skill and stuff. And I, I'm wondering if you had had, had you had any practice runs that had gone better than this or was this pretty, like this was where you were at? What, tell us a little bit about the practice. No, this, this. Was my, this was my best run I probably had done this week. It would have been much faster if I didn't look at portraits or do the, the crash because the timer kept going. Right. on the crash it was going to be like a sub one hour run i think it was something like that uh 50 something um but yeah the the result of this run again is that same thing that i that we talked about back in 2014 the, that the um about the amount of pressure that i just throw on myself and feeling like i'm not in the super mario world community i just had to i just push myself i probably pushed myself a little too hard because like these guys are trying to have fun and i'm like i'm so like Deer caught in the headlight. I'm like, if I don't nail these speedrun strats, everyone's gonna hate me. But like, people, they, everyone just want to have fun. So like, Barb and Pooh were great uh, for a lot of the parts in this run because they'd say things. They know I don't like to talk much because I'm nervous. Um, and then they're when I hear that they ask me like, oh, check this out, then I know it's okay and I don't have to worry about it. Right? Like your couch is literally your like team. It's it yeah. really helpful. It, they really helped me. For the record, I was not nervous for Mitch at all. I knew he would <laughs> freaking slay it, you know. Like, yeah, so, you guys look so really good. comfortable sitting on the couch, he's by the way. He's so but. good. And, and, and the Mario World community uh, fully understands that he would crush all of us if he, you know, didn't already have a lover. So um, <laughs> yeah, he, does, he, does, <laughs> he doesn't need to worry about that part at all. You know what I mean? Like, and that, you know what? I think that goes for pretty much every community out there. Like, if Mitch starts playing Mega Man, you're all done. Like you're done. You're oh you're, you're out. Like so get over it. You know what I mean. You guys just be lucky. He's obsessed with Mario three because he's saving he's saving all all of the records could be his. <laughs> Too kind. Too kind. Man. Yeah. Uh there's something I wanted to bring up. So uh, Real Kun, who's producing this show, it makes this happen. He's the tech behind everything you're seeing right now. Um, he was actually saying as GDQ staff that sometimes they know to match up specific hardware with games, depending on the issues and things like that. And uh, not sure if anybody was aware, like you guys mentioned it, not sure if they were even aware of some of the, if this issue per happened before. So, you know, that's one of the things I do try hard to get. So you're getting the right hardware for the right game and everything like that. Right. So. Yeah, I don't think it's anything we had saw before. And I also think the decision to play on that cartridge was a pretty late one too though mm -hmm. yeah like because the cartridge had just shown up um and before he was going to play on like uh what's called an fx pack now so yeah I, I we i don't i just don't think we had ever seen that crash before happen, oh yeah so it oh that's it it, okay it was yeah it was sorry to cut you off it was just so happened that barb had and brought his cart that's what that's yeah. all it was right yeah i'm pretty sure because we like i was asked hey do you guys have a card of this and I was like, I don't have a card. I don't think Barb had really released any, right? And if he did, I don't think any of us brought it. Unless I'm thinking wrong. I don't know. But regardless, I used his cartridge. So whenever it crashed, the first thing I did was look at him. 
I was like, it's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? And we, <laughs> like, um, like my Dram 1 was on a specific Dram 1 cartridge, but my Dram 2 run, because it was, they used the same save file for the task bot afterwards. I was going mm -hmm. to use the cartridge there, but I ended up using the SD card for it. And that's when I was, I was lucky I did, because then I could have Penga change it for me. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so generally, though, um, I, in in my experience, most people like, especially when they're having a GDQ run with it, they'll get a cart made for them just because it's an experience. You get to have people sign it, you know what I mean? Like at that point, it's. I, I always say that, man. If you're gonna go to a GDQ, just absorb the whole experience. Yeah. Because you got to do it. Uh, yeah. This, you know, this came up in the chat a while ago, and I think it's kind of a good question as we're watching just more incredibleness happen on the screen here. Um, if, if somebody wants to try out, uh, you know, a Kaizo or a ROM hack, you know, or a fan-made game like this, um, where's a good place to start? Because this looks like it's like the epitome. This was like the most challenging game ever. Where's a good place to start in Kaizo or fan-made? Oh, I mean, S go to SMW Central. And, yeah, SMW um, Central. Yeah, and now there's a couple learning hacks. I mean, uh, Penga made, to me, the... Every Kaizo player should play it brand new. That's the one I or, recommend to everyone yeah. first. Kaizo Kindergarten, it's it's it has um it definitely has some uh mid chapter some some mid chapter tests that are difficult, but oh, yeah, I it's think pretty after, hard. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I think like... after playing Kaizo like the thing with Kaizo Kindergarten that I love, Peng, so Penga made a training hack. That was the last hack you made. It's it's so incredible. It has visuals for everything, but it does it doesn't just tell you how to do things, it tells you why those things happen. Um, and something that I think that really separates good Kaizo players from great Kaizo players is understanding why those things happen too. Um, and, uh, that, that to me is like the epitome. Oh my, I, this Yoshi landing on it is hilarious. Um, that to me is like the epitome of, um, the best training hack, you know, in my opinion. Um, so that's a I good agree. place to start. Then that's, that's, World. Yeah, that's where I recommend. Yeah, Quickie World's a good one to play mm -hmm. once you mm -hmm. finish learning. Which has been at a GDQ, so hopefully for a part two we can dig into some of those because there's there's so many wonderful fan-made games that uh, we could do a bunch of episodes on this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is it, Penga, so I'm curious, since, you know, Dram 1 and Dram 2, have you worked with other folks in design, developing and, and it has, does it change the process at all when you're working with others? So Dream 2, I did work with a couple more people. Um, I did have a, I think I had a few playtesters for that. And I, for for future games, I do want to have more people working with me since I come to realize that you just can't do everything yourself. Like, I don't know how to code well. So if you want to do extra things in these games, you probably have to consult people. And then music too. People love the music, and I kind of didn't really put any music in my hacks. So those two things I think could make a big change in the atmosphere. And then I, yeah. And then I, I do want to have more play testers since having uh, more people get different perspectives on different areas is pretty huge because you might not think of something that someone else would. And I've actually considered making. A level with Barb. I'm not That's sure cool. if we'd actually do that, but yeah, like we 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 talked about collabing. Same with Link Dead. So there might be some more potential for collaboration. Collab hack. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Panga collab hack, dude. I love that idea. Um, Panga and Barb have made levels too at 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 a charity event we do called MMC and Mario Maker. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, <laughs> we make them do it. Yeah, That's make them do switch. it. Like, yeah, they have to do it in like an hour, and the and chat gets to like donate to tell them what they put in the level, yeah, which is really funny. So funny. It's really funny to see it come out, but like to see like what they pump out in hours, like it was incredible. Um, it was pretty stressful too. Yeah. And uh, fun, to, yeah, speaking of that, uh, Dan VP actually added a bunch of custom music to Dram 1. That's right. Uh, for me, because one of the reasons I was struggling to go back was I, was, I hate the original Mario music at this point. I'm just <laughs> that's between that's years and years. Yeah, you need some jam. <laughs> yeah, years right? and years of Mario Maker and just you know and everything. Like I just hated it. I couldn't stand it anymore. So they they pumped that out for me. I, I think he asked you before he did it, Peng, because I, I was very specific. He had to do that. Yeah, no, it was yeah. perfectly fine. It's something I do yeah. want to do more since I do yeah. like some of the music that people. Well, music's make, hard because. You have to capture an atmosphere that I think that that everyone agrees on, and it's hard to do that without releasing it and seeing how yeah. people experience. It. I don't know how Barb did so well with all the music. He had um, 
I can't remember the name. You, you know, um, composer. composer. Composer Dan the VP did yeah. the vast majority of music, and, there, and there's even some custom tracks. There's I think two or three levels that have like yeah, custom House of tracks. Yeah, Dying is one. Yeah. And another one. I think Bowser's. I think Bowser's actually a custom track, but yes. I, I could be wrong. Again, Barb would know all this. So I don't want to put words in his mouth. Then. Well, I'm glad you mentioned, we keep mentioning it over and over again, but about this community that comes together to make these games. And uh, as somebody who keep asking in the chat, hey, how do I get involved in some of this stuff? Well, I've had a chat with Composer and he was saying, I just went into Discord and started talking, you know, asking people questions. And it, it's amazing what you'll find and what you can connect on and similar interests and things like that just by asking people. Uh, it's, it's one thing I've noticed about this community is um, a lot of people like to talk to each other about the games that they like, you know? <laughs> So yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's one of those cool I feel things. Like that's the concept you can apply to like so many aspects of just like yeah. life in general. <laughs> like just go and talk, yeah. But especially if like you have something that you know you have a skill that you haven't seen being utilized or offered yet. You know yeah, what I mean? Take, like, right? Um, yeah, it's so. You know, that's it's something that like if you know like oh I could help and contribute this like it's totally. You know. Everyone's open, and um, and I think the other thing is like the Kaizo, like in, as far as like a gaming community or a speedrun community, it is still very new and in, in in its infancy stage. So like nothing's set. You know, new new people pop up all the time. Like new creators pop up all the time. We're just like, whoa, where's this guy been? This hack's so incredible. Like. Uh, amazing like you know who, you mentioned it earlier i remember when invictus came out and you know yeah. everyone was asking who is just cook the, you know there was there yeah. was this it, it's great that somebody could have such a big impact who you, you all hadn't had a chance he doesn't live in the states so nobody you know in here in the states we hadn't had a chance to hang out with him or anything like that so it, it's kind of cool what you can see what can happen in the community you know yeah I and mean, we like uh, us mario maker guys knew him because he was he had oh, cool. been pretty deep into that but um yeah i mean i think that really cemented Invictus, Inv I think Invictus was a, like, Dram was like the first shift and then Invictus was like, uh, like the next evolution of it. You know what I mean? Um, Dr oh. Dram's like the, the, the pinnacle moment of, like, these games are playable and then Invictus was like that next, like, evolutionary step for sure. And then since then, I just think like the level, the quality of hacks. It's just insane. And this, I mean, just even this year in 2021, the amount of really, really, really high quality, like, hacks um, is just really high now, you know? And like you said, like, like you said, like, Grand Prix World 2 felt like a AAA release, and that's how a <laughs> lot of these feel now. Yeah. 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 It's, it's really kind of wild. Uh, Mitch, I got to ask you as, you, as we're watching through this, um, are there any stages that you have found more challenging than others in this game? Uh, yeah, actually, the, the one... Um, the secret to this level before Hanzo's, I was very, very nervous for, and it did end up, I Web think level. it killed me twice, was the, the, <laughs> the falling level with the cobwebs. Right. With the, I think it's got the Batman music or something, and um, that level, um, there's levels so that, like, it's weird as a speedrunner, there's levels that, like, naturally are not hard for anyone, we all get through them, but your perception on what you're doing makes it harder. If that makes sense, I don't, that level didn't need to be as hard as I made it, but it's just always been hard for me. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing in that level that's that I can't do. It's just I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know why. So that level always. This whole run, that was the only level I've stressed out about. Nope. Do you have a favorite level in the uh, in the run? Uh, House of Un House of the Undying is really good, and uh, the, this level is also really good. The the red level, and then uh, every other level is also really good. So. Yeah, <laughs> I I love them all. It's yeah. so hard to pick a favorite. I really yeah. can't. Uh, I gotta ask the kind of the same really questions to you too, Pooh, because you I I think you've been even I've seen you run this recently. If I remember, like a couple yeah. weeks ago or something. So, is yeah, there a level you ever get like tired of or anything like that? Uh, this is my like legit. This is my second favorite video game ever. So, um, no, I I like. Out of across all games, Splunky Two is my favorite video game ever. Mario Three, which was my favorite at one point, is now dropped down to number three. It's got like four, or three, or five, or something. <laughs> yeah, it's dropped okay, down okay, to three. Okay, I'm not hurt. Yeah, no, um, you know, it's, uh, um, but yeah, this is just, it's, it, you know what? It, it's just, it's a game that I'll never get bored of. The the end boss fight is always like super fun, fun and challenging in always fun to react to it's it's um there's very few 
there's not a level in this like every speed run i've ever had there's like you know some times or gaps or like i'm like oh, I'm really I'm bored of playing this it just doesn't exist in this game mm -hmm. um, it doesn't it really doesn't yeah it just doesn't exist in this game i mean dream world 2 for me it doesn't exist like i i like every single level in that game as well um I, so i i, I find yeah. that there was something weird with this hat like it just hit at the right time. I don't know yeah. what happened. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't I don't I don't play many Super Mario World hacks. I never played Invictus. I never played Quickie. I never played anyone's hacks. I barely gave Grand Pool World one a go. I think I got to like four levels, then tried to break it with like a key or so. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> and then Graham Pool World Two came out and, and oh, like it key. had to have hit me emotionally or something at the right time. Key. And I just I just it just hit I don't know why, and I agree with Fubert. Yeah. This is definitely not only one of my favorite GDQ runs I've ever done, and one of the ones I'm most proud of. But this game is something that I just I absolutely love. I just spent yeah. like 100 hours protecting spoilers from Lack Attack in his stream, <laughs> oh, so God, that he could preserve so enjoying it just as much as I did. I spent 100 hours modding spoilers, yeah. and that's how much I love this game. I literally I'll dedicate my time if there's another person who needs like a bodyguard. I like spoilers because everyone deserves to enjoy this game the way that I did. Yeah, the, it's it's one of those rare games where I will watch like if anyone's playing this for the first time, I'm gonna watch that. Mm -hmm. um, especially if it's another speedrunner that I really really love and is coming over to do it because <laughs> it's so much fun watching them you know, fall for the same things you fell for and and just getting through it and it does it just flows real well and watching the skill it, it does a good way of this it's so weird this game this, you never like get stuck on any one move in particular in this game usually you know you're always having this constant state of progression but then when you're done with the level you realize oh that level took me an hour and a half two hours you know to, to beat but you don't feel like that ever which is very hard to do it's very very hard to do that it's not easy so that's so. that's only the one place where i feel like i would separate with with how grand pooh bear thinks about that and that again goes towards my lack of experience with this game i spent way too much time on the cape level because i just had little to no yeah, understanding okay. on That's the cape and, okay. and i got stuck there forever because like i didn't even know how to slow down with it i didn't know how to which directions and, and that's from lack of experience of super mario world and using cape it just it, so this this is it. really this is really it. funny though this is really funny um and when i was doing speedruns of grand Pool world one barb made a cape level and it was it was easily the easiest level in the game like no doubt the cape section was just like not even not even hard at all so my i titled my split for that level barb can't cape and like oh, that dude it took it so personally he took it so personally that he eventually uh, you know that he made this cape the cape level in this game which mitch is coming up to right now so hard and long and difficult and full of you know slowing down and speeding up and all these other things i mean and 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 i learned my lesson you know i learned my lesson so i learned your lesson too yeah we all learned the lesson <laughs> on that one <laughs> I, I think that's one of those things too that makes you know pengo the, the games you've made and also with this game as well that you can still watch it today and still really enjoy it. You can still enjoy playing it. Uh, you, we, you mentioned Lack Attack, and I was watching the same thing with you. I, I've seen this game a hundred times at this point. I know all the spoilers that are coming, and I was still on the edge of my seat watching somebody play it for the first time or trying it mm -hmm. for the first time. And I think that says a lot to the, the, the te a testament to this game, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Penga, I I'm curious too, you know, have you gone back and have you ever gone back to maybe Dram World or gone back to, to Grand Pool World to play these games again, even, you know, years later nowadays? I think I did a Dram playthrough like a couple years ago just to see how much has changed between then and now. <laughs> um, I can't remember if I, I think I played Grand Pool World 1. I, actually, I've never beaten Grand Pool World 1. Uh, oh. I, I stopped after the final boss. I forget why, but... Yeah, I think oh, that's really? why I wanted to uh, uh, beat Grand Prix World 2 so fast because I never beat the first one, but maybe one yeah, day I'll, I, I'll I go back. I fell off the Grand Prix World 1 as well after that whole key fiasco thing. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I can't remember if I have replayed Grand Prix World 2, but I, I would like to because just watching this is giving me the nostalgic feel. 
I remember yeah, watching that's what through I was the- doing too, right? Like I would would watch it and I did a couple levels here and there. It's just it was fun. You, you, you're gonna love it. I, I'm glad you guys brought up the cape stuff because we're seeing literally almost every variation you can see of the cape in one level. <laughs> like this is yeah. this looks really tough. Oh yeah, each section. Yeah. When I blind when I did this blind, each section for me was like six hours or something. It was yeah. Really, maybe not this one. I think this is the easiest section. But yeah. Just too much for me. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely it was definitely like, oh I can't cape. Look, I'm gonna do every cape trick that you can possibly do. <laughs> Yeah, Barb's like, Everyone if I can't it. cape, no one can, right? <laughs> yeah. He just made this beast. Yeah, the Super Mario cape is very versatile. Yeah. And it's also uh, risky, isn't it, to put in your hack because it can break things. If you can bring it out of the level, you probably ruin the entire hack. And, like, if you don't put the, you know, remove items or whatever. I know there's a lot of weird things, right, in hacks where you can not... Like, you can exit a level, but your power-up is small. Like, yeah. like in this one, right? Mm -hmm. You can't continue with it. Yeah, Cape does introduce potential cheese, but I think if you if you put it in a hack, right, it's it's, it's a ton of fun. It's a nice change in pace. And yeah. Just being small the entire time. Yeah, I mean, the, if I you've ever watched normal Mario World speedruns, you guys probably are aware of just, like, how incredibly powerful the Cape is in Mario World. It's probably one of the most OP, you know, power-ups in any video game when put in the right hands, but it is, I mean, it's, it is difficult to control um, if you don't have a lot of time with it, because um, it's very sensitive, like the slow down and speed up things. Um, oh, I'm good at it now, baby. Yeah. Oh, I got, <laughs> yeah, I got the, it now. The, the, you, I know you got good at it now, exactly. I'll never like, forget it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is, is that the thing you might... For me, it was Dram 2. Like, I had never done Cape until Dram 2, and Dram 2 had two incredibly difficult Cape levels that took me forever because I was so bad at the Cape because I only played Kaizo Mario World. I didn't play regular. And so that was, like, where I cut my teeth on Cape and then mocked Barb for not doing that, and this is what we got. Mitch, I was actually going to ask you, is that one of the things you maybe spent uh, more time than other things in this game is with the Cape stuff? Uh, maybe a little bit, um, because like Dram was saying with practice, I mean, you practice, 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 and then eventually you're going to hit a wall and like, this is, you know, you're running out of time, you hit a wall, you, I, you can't focus all your time on just doing it. So I spent a lot of time getting myself comfortable with this, but I don't think I would spend a lot of time on this where it's like a hundred extra hours of practice before GDQ on this, before anything else. It, it was pretty close to equally... Separated. Pinga, there uh, are some. Oh, good boop. One thing right here, there's a final troll, and it's those ropes you could fall through earlier in the level. And this troll, like watching everyone fall through those ropes, because <laughs> if you run on that last rope, you just fall right through and die. Like, yeah, you don't even have you, to like jump over. Yeah. You can just walk, and I still jump over because I don't even want to get close to them. <laughs> if you if you ever watch, Barb has a video on YouTube of just like clips of like you know, funny clips of people playing this game, but please, the part three of just watching every single player that played this game <laughs> fall through that rope at the end is so funny because every single player fell through that rope, you know? Uh, Pink, I have to ask, because we've seen a few times now where there's been some really long falling sections. Are there any limits to the amount that you can develop a level and like how large it can be? Technically, yes, but it's a very long like length. Um, before, you used to only be able to do vertical or horizontal levels. Like, there'd be a, a limit on how long or wide the level is. But recently, I think now you can make a level both long and wide. But there is still, like, a hard cap. Like, eventually, you, you run out of space. But, I mean, that's not does, too much of a thing you should worry about. Does the SNES and, like, the ROM have, like, ROM expansion? Like, do you find that a lot in ROM hacking? Like expanding the ROM so that you can like make a lot of modifications. I think you is that not common? I think the editor does that for you automatically when you first edit. But I could be wrong. Oh, okay, I think we have. I remember since... like back in the day there was like some ha uh, some games would work on just like the S2D SNES, but not on the EverDrive. You know, because of different limits and stuff, but. Oh my God. Yeah, now everyone's Bar Barb in chat effect. right now? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I saw the guy who asked if, Bar if Barb can actually beat these levels. Barb is like one of the greatest Mario players out there. Like he's played so many hacks at this point. He's yeah, so good. And, and now it, it, because he makes these, because he makes them too. And same thing with Panga. They're both incredibly good at playing them blind. Much better than me, I think. 
um, because they, like I talked about, they have all the knowledge of why these things happen, not just it's going to happen, but why it's going to happen. So. And, and I mentioned this earlier, but I'll say it again because it needs repeating, that if you haven't watched the run before this, the commentary is really good where Barb does give you insight from his point of view and his perspective. Uh, doesn't mention if he's actually beat all of us, but yes, he has I mean, at this point. Yeah, yeah. like many, <laughs> many, many times. Like he's, if, if, Barb, if Barb wanted to, if he wanted to have world records in Super Mario World instead of making Mario World games, he'd, he'd have no problem doing that. He could definitely compete with anybody else if that's what he wanted to do, you know? Um, yeah, he's got this like thankfully, natural thankfully way. Thankfully for us, he'd rather make games, baby. <laughs> right? Thank you. Yeah. And, like, I have to say, he's got this like natural way of like how he perceives and how he like plays it. Like, like I've seen him like play a level, and he's like, "Why is that shell there?" But he still beat the level in like three minutes. Right? It's like two <laughs> minutes, and he's on on to the next one. He's just like so fast. Yeah, very well, good. Got that natural. That that highlights an important point too, that you don't necessarily need to be like a speedrunner to, to attempt these or try these games. A lot of this is perseverance mm -hmm. and you know, keep going at it, right? All of it is yeah. that, yeah. No, like, and I think that's the thing. If you, if you look at any of the, if you look at any of the guys that are really capable of competing for these high times now, um, they're, the reason why is because they've played so much of these games at this point and they practice these specific ones so much. And it's also why but, you see, like, if you go through Kaizo leaderboards, you're going to see a bunch of different names and not one because it's, you know, it, they are still game-specific speedruns and game-specific tricks and game-specific things you need to learn, even though they're all variations of Mario. Yeah, and that, don't, let, yeah don't let that discourage anyone, right? Anyone can, no. can approach it as long as you put in the time. It's, it's not like you watch these runs and it's like, oh, I can't get this good. It'll take me three years. It's like, not even close, man. It'll take five mm. months, maybe. You work really hard. Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah, you know, or, uh, Penga, uh, this brings up an interesting question. When you're creating a level or when you've created Dram World, were you specifically trying to challenge yourself or are you just trying to find something that plays well? Like, what's the purpose as you're trying to create through a level? Um, in terms of the level, like, difficulty, I more want to find a difficulty that's fun for players, not for myself. But I do try to challenge myself in terms of the level design. So, I know that most people don't like spending multiple, multiple hours on one level. Some people might. I mean, I do. But if I can find a good, a, yeah, like a, a good balance between fairness and difficulty, then that, that's what I do. And that's what I've been trying to do ever since I made Dream World. Here, my puppy's going off in the background again. Uh, Mitch, you know, you've, you've created a, an SMB3 ROM hack and you've done levels before. Is that a similar approach you take or are you trying to find ways to push yourself in new, new directions? I, I take a similar approach, but I also try and push something where like, I've never done something like this before and then I want the player to play. So my, my levels don't definitely don't hit as hard as some of these creators because they, they have that equal fairness and like tricks to it. I always end up putting some weird thing in my level that's like, you've probably never done it before, but it's like, it's, it could be like awkward. So I definitely don't hit as hard like that. Like these guys are, it's just so good. But I try okay, to influence the way gonna, I make levels. This is gonna levels. sound weird, but no one person knows everything about SMW, but there's no one person that knows anything as well about SMB3 as Mitch does. Does that make sense? He knows more than all of us out there. Everybody. He has he has all the knowledge in SMB3 that exists. So sometimes he cranks something out that nobody even gets or would ever think about. You know what I mean? But to him, he, he just he's like, oh, yeah, I knew this because I did it in 2015 in a random right. strat. I was pulling off trying to save two it's, seconds. It didn't work. It didn't work. But, you know, I remember it. Well, it's you know? kind of like how, how Panga said, you know, he did Dram's Butthole, the revised version, in an hour and a half, and it still took other runners 24 hours, right? Yeah. It's just like, it's the way it is, I guess. Yeah. Um, so we're getting, we're, this is, uh, so we're getting towards the end of this run. And, um, if you're just watching this for the first time ever, you might not get the full experience of what's happening, but Good. maybe Mitch, you can you walk us it. through a little bit about what we're doing here? <laughs> Just as I say that they have to earn it, like they have to play it to... Um, no, so essentially like this this last level is um, kind of like pick your pick your own path to go through four sections and it takes you to the last boss, but if you find enough secrets and do enough of the uh, in-game, you know, little tricks and stuff, you can actually find an, an alternate exit that takes you to King Bowser and 
This is the category where we will be fighting Bowser, and you know, I don't want to spoil anything, of course. So that's just essentially what's going on here. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say much. No, I'm I'm curious, like you know, Pooh, when you were first playing through this, is this? I mean, this is there's multiple ways to get through. This. Did you want to go through every door at this point? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was, like, that was one of the first things I did when I first beat the game was went back and did every door, um, which took a little while, because you gotta remember which one you did and whatnot, um, but yeah, that was, that was one of the things, but then also when we were all first learning the game, it was like, it was a thing where it was like, all right, which route's the fastest, and so we were like, mm. timing different doors and different rooms, and then eventually we realized that, like, with very few exceptions, they're all pretty much the same that is the most insane <laughs> yeah, thing that i think relatively Barb the did. same so yeah. it's, it's actually like a really fun thing because pretty much everyone who speed runs this game does different sets different. of doors that's right that's yeah. right like yeah. even during my run here like barb was saying like i i do one of the sections that nobody else does but he likes that section and then there was another section where it was like only me and i think laser or no panga you did this section with me right you did yeah that i one do this well. room i remember this one. yeah this this room yeah i don't do this room who does the thwomp room and i do i do i do the water? one no. the fireball one you did mm -hmm. i do dolphins the dolphin statue which dolphins. i, I it's li literally my least favorite room out of all these but it's so easy <laughs> yeah, it's like free, and, um, and which is funny because I probably die in that room more than any of the other ones because I never do. And then it. you and then do the swamp one. one. Yeah. But the, you do this room, which I'm glad you do. The, the thing is, the swamp one is like the one of the rooms that is definitely faster. But this room is the coolest room out of all of them. So it's like I found this one to be like really easy, but then a lot yeah. of people were saying this one was hard. But I did not find the dolphin one easy. No way. No, this one, this room is just so cool though. Like I loved this. I I love that you do this room because it's so it's yeah. very very. The very shell cool, jump. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, the how shell jump. So and then you cool. reuse it. Oh my god. Yeah. Watching it kind of breaks the brain. Yeah, I know you think it might be a little bit easier, Mitch, but it, it just looks confusing, to, but but it's so perfectly set up. It just oh, it looks like everything clicks in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and talking about those Kaizo tropes now, um, a lot, a, a few more Kaizo games now are actually kind of using the, the pick whatever you want final level situation. And I love that. I think that's like such a good thing to, to add into. So you're seeing these games now add more and more of their own tropes and kind of adding to the overall Kaizo lore that started with Kaizo 1 that Panga cemented with Dram and, and now just kind of continues on. Uh, Mitch, how do you do the, how do you hit the turtle, the turtle shell twice here? Uh, I, I've seen that question come up a couple of times and I'm curious. That is a non vanilla thing. That's something that he intentionally put in for that specific trick. And I mean, um, I can't remember the exact names Cooper would know, but I mean, there's, there's some hacks out there that revolve around using that concept, but like to an insane amount. I mean, the, the, they have the hacks where there's a number beside the shell, right? And that number represents how many times you can bounce on the shell before it becomes a dead shell. And I think Cooper could tell a little bit more about that. Yeah, there's there's tons of hacks now. Uh, Super Chefy World 2 is, was one of the first ones I saw that did that, but they, I mean, that's infinite bounce shells and all sorts of different things. Um, I mean, like I said now, like the, and Pango would probably say this better than me, but it, it definitely feels like now, despite being on a 16-bit game, uh, Mario World creators are pretty much only limited by their imagination and uh, who they can get a hold of to help them yeah. out, you know? Yeah. I mean, it almost feels like it, you're making an entirely different game that's not Super Mario World. Like, yeah. that's how advanced it's gotten. Like, you can add double jumps, you could add, like, even more power-ups if you want. You can pretty much add anything. You can you can pick things up like Mario 2 now. Like, you can just, just whatever your heart desires. Uh, because it's on Lately, screen right now, I, I don't think we can get away without talking about Bowser. Um, so good. Uh, this seems so challenging, Mitch. What's going on with this fight? It just, it looks tough. <laughs> so he's got, he's got like his normal phases. When you first start the battle, he... And he almost one shot. I, I, I used to have it down to like knowing the first letter of what he's doing and like have a phrase of what I say to know. And like, that was a long time ago. But like, he'll, he'll like, he'll jump, he'll throw, he'll spit, right? And then... He'll stomp, right? So he's got that. And then after you hit him uh, two times, he pops out of that phase. And then he, I think he adds in two more things, Pooh Bear, doesn't he? One or two. Yeah, I think every phase he adds. He adds right, more, so like, regardless, he has more attacks. And that's why his shell's changing. Um, mm -hmm. Once his phase goes in, he adds more attacks. And but like what I'm saying just, is like that fire attack, he yeah. can't do that on the first go. Yeah. Like when you first enter, he can't do that, right? 
Yeah. But now his shell now his shell changes to yellow. Now he can add ice physics, uh, a flame wall, um, and oh my god, yeah, it's just. It's, how, how long yeah, did the did your first Bowser take you, uh, Mitch? The first time you played him? Actually, it took all of us pretty close to the same amount of time. This was one of the things that we were talking about that we came together as a community and did with uh, Glitch Cat, Panga, um, and stuff. And we all did this together, and it took us three hours, like three and a half hours for our first Bowser. Yeah, it took a while. I, I forget think. the exact amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one close of the things that, that um, I remember Barb talking about this was he wanted to do was. Um, you kind of like a lot of the Bowser fights are like specifically like Bowser and Kaizo 3. You're not spending a lot of time actually attacking Bowser. Um, whereas in this fight, you're you're on the offensive a good amount. You're not having to just play defense the whole time um, because you're getting a lot of weapons to attack him with. And uh, what happened, what I noticed for a lot of people's first play is that eventually, like the, you know, it'd line up where you'd get the shell attack the first time for every phase. And like that gave you those extra hits and, and kind of allowed you to get out in a, a quick way. So um, eventually this Bowser almost just shows mercy on you after you've been playing him for two or three hours. Mitch, you said you had uh, some letters. Are there some set uh, attacks or patterns that, that this Bowser does? Well, yeah, at first in the, in yeah. the first phase, he'll always phase, stomp. Okay. Yeah, he'll always stomp spit. Dude or shell or whatever. This whole but he can do them in any order. order. Yeah, he can oh, do them in any order. order. Yeah. Yeah. But so it doesn't look so like that four. when you first see the game. So. He, yeah, so like he starts with only four attacks and he just rotates mm -hmm. between those four attacks and then you get walls, mm -hmm. like the walls yep. right here. Um, and one thing to note about the wall is that if you get a five wall and you're not on top of them, you're pretty much dead. Nice. Yeah, um, pretty yeah, and so each phase he starts adding in more attacks, which is twofold thing because A, you're getting less weapons with his attacks because you're getting less shells and to pop out and B, you know, you're just, you know, adding in more attacks is obviously going to be more to remember. It's just going to make it more difficult. Um, but it's this Bowser is like it. I, I, I would I could just play this Bowser all day. Like I never get tired of fighting this boss. No, God, no. Um, yeah. And then I'm glad. So now that you know that about Bowser, the, the thing of why Barb had changed and why I was asking him in the run, like, you know, being a little baby about it, uh, <laughs> is that if you attack Bowser at a very specific moment during that first phase where he only has the four attacks, you can keep him in that four attack phase. And that's that's what he had fixed from version one to the next phase. Because yeah. Bowser would be so easy. You, you could beat Bowser and never die like 50 times in a row if you just concentrate on the first few attacks that he did. And he stays in that phase and you just beat him. So I'm, yeah. I am glad he changed it. It's so much better this way. Yeah, it was a, it, it, I think it was, it was kind of funny because there was a, a big debate on it, but it just, like, I think it came down to this Bowser so fun. It's so fun doing it correctly that, like. It definitely ruined it. Yeah, it's like one of those rare things where um, he, you know, he, he took it out. Because I, 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 in Barb's, in my experience with Barb, he doesn't, he's not going to just change something because the speedrunner found a better way to do it. Um, but this fight is so good that it would have been. It really would have been a shame if we were just kind of seeing just the first phase every time. <laughs> it would have, you know? I right? ask well, you... all we would need is Pooh Bear to make fun of it, and then, yeah, Grand Pool of Three Bowser is just unbeatable. <laughs> no, he's Whoa. so good. I, I, you know, I learned my lesson. I'm not, I'm never, <laughs> not questioning anybody's cape skills ever again <laughs> if I'm going to be playing their game. I learned my lesson. You know, I do want to ask you about that, Pooh, because I don't know if you've played through Kaizo Mario World 3, but, uh, you know, they, I hear a lot of speedrunners just flat out never want to play that fight ever again. But this one seems like people seem to really enjoy getting back into this. But they is there something what's like the, some of the differences there? The offense, well, I, I think man, the main difference is like like I was saying, you're 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 not just playing defense, whereas a lot in like Kaizo Mario Brothers 3. And, and don't get me wrong, that Bowser is super fun as well. I, if I didn't have to play the regular base game, I'd play that Bowser a lot, too. Um, <laughs> But um, you see Mitch just slay it and then go to just the, the coolest like cherry on top on this game, the escape right here. Um, yeah, so anyone in chat who can't hear, this has got like the Super Metroid escape music to it. So it's really <laughs> capturing the whole. So perfect. Right, You just so spent good. 40 hours trying to escape from the room. Then you have to fight, you know, the king of the Koopas, right? Then you beat him and you're like, oh. Finally, nope, not done yet. And then yeah. there's some screen wrap weird thing here that that was left in with the with, oh, it already passed with the thwomp, right? Yeah. Sometimes that thwomp would come down, so <laughs> it's really cool. A little cool key toss. Oh, so cool, man. Yeah, this is just <laughs> such a this. cool, such a cool moment, and you get a little saver kill the animals at the end, but.
Yeah, I, I think I think just the way that boss sets up and that it's um, it's not unfair. It doesn't feel unfair, RNG. Everything feels fair. Like every attack, you can dodge yourself. You know what I mean? Um, but it's just oh, you saved Yoshi. I forgot. Um, it's just a great fight, man. I don't know. It's just it's just one of those rare things that. It's just super perfect. Every time you win, you feel awesome. And every time you lose, you never feel like it was unfair. You feel like it was your fault. And it's that's very, very hard to do in a boss with random attacks. But I mean, that that's the boss does it, yeah. It's still one of my favorite moments in any game watching the escape because you just this ridiculous Bowser and then you're <laughs> you've got Not Super Metroid yet. style, you know. Uh, yeah. It had to have been a relief, Mitch, actually getting through that after an hour, I'm guessing. <laughs> I did. That was a, a very big weight lifted off my shoulder, and then the run went well, so I feel like we, we all did. It was good. Um, what a game. And uh, Barb, thanks for being there in the chat, answering some of those questions as well, helping out and getting through this. And a, a big thank you to all of you here. Uh, one of the things that I think uh, I don't want to forget and don't miss is that all of this has been done in the name of charity. Like, I, Pooh, I think since you're Dram World 1, you've been donating per desk for all of these runs, and it's helped raise a ton of money for a really important cause. So that's, uh, it seems like you know, important you know what's to you. Fun? Yeah, I'm not the only one that's done that. That's pretty much every, I think every right. single Kaizo run since then. It's like the Kaizo stick, yeah. right? It's, well, it's a yeah. two-way two thing, too, because not only is it, like, not only is it good for the world, but it also makes your deaths feel fun, you know, instead of <laughs> making you look bad on them. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been a part of that. I mean, even when uh, Oats and Ghosts did his Super Metroid run, he did that. So, um, and, and I got that idea from Boshi players. So it's not, I didn't, definitely didn't invent that or anything. But, um, yeah, and we, we all like to get together and, like, usually the couch will donate for each death, too. And um, it's just really, that's a really fun part of the, you know, the community. And I think um, charity's been an important part of, what we've all, you know, what the Kaizo community has been all about anyway, you know? Um, it, it, yeah. it actually... Oh, go ahead, Pooh. No, I mean, like, I couldn't do this without Panga. And, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't be where I'm at without Panga. And he wouldn't be where I was without Dram. And, and we wouldn't be where we're at now without Barb and, and all these things. Like, so I think because we're so reliant on each other um, as a community, it, it makes helping... Things like ingrained in what we do, or maybe that's just how I think about it. But yeah, <laughs> no, no, it is true because I, yeah. I come from the other side. I come from Mario Three. And we don't have yeah. that. We don't have that big sort of thing from Mario Three. So no, that is true. From the outside, that is what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, we're a very friendly community. It, it, we thrive off Mario Three's like, oh, you don't have yeah. sub fifty three. <laughs> 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 Well, it, it actually segues perfectly. Uh, I'm, we're going to do a couple of quick plugs here for where we can find you on everything. But Mitch, I do want to give a shout out because speaking of charity, you're doing a charity thing here <laughs> in just a few days. So yeah, uh, yeah, where for, can people for find Mario you and, and help do all, you know, get in all this stuff? Yeah. Where, where can we find you on the... Uh, where oh, can we find oh you? you want the... Oh, it'll be uh, twitch.tv slash Mitch Flowerpower, my normal, my normal Twitch page and raising money with the Starlight uh, Children's Foundation, which is incredible. Um, helping seriously ill kids in hospitals. And uh, depending on how much money we raise, we can get a video game cabinet in a hospital of my choice, which obviously I'm going to pick one that doesn't have one. And yeah, it comes like... Dude, it's crazy, these cabinets, man. They come with like a TV and like... Um, a preloaded switch with like all these games. Holy crap, we gotta get one. So we're doing we're doing that on Mario Day, which is Wednesday, March 10th. Big day for incredible. Mario folks. March Big 10th. day, man. We can do it. <laughs> uh Pingo, where do you ever do any of your level design stuff or anything like that on stream? Can people watch or is it something, you know, uh, where can people find you? I usually do Mario Maker level design on stream, although I've been kind of burnt down on making levels in general, so I haven't done it in a while. But if you ever are interested, you can find me at twitch.tv slash pangpinga, which is above my head. There is another A right after the G. People forget that. And then, yeah, I also have a YouTube where I post highlights too. Same thing. And finally, Pooh, uh, where can people find you at? Where can they see all your, uh, your stuff? I'm Grant, I'm Grant Pooh Bear. Just... <laughs> You can just type it in anywhere. I'm sure my something, sure something will pop up. Something will pop up. Yeah, and <laughs> and, and, and uh, follow Barb, follow Dram, um, yeah. Just Cook. There's just, there's so many incredible creators. There's no way we could uh, say them all. Um, like Space Pig out there is is making a ROM hack, and he's I'm so excited for what he's doing now. He's been a Mario Maker creator that I've just loved for years, and 
Uh, it's gonna be insane. His hack. Yeah, it's gonna be so. I think his gonna be so good. Uh, track in is making a, a hack or a game this year. There's there's so many incredible games that are coming out and that have already came out in 2021. Um, that it's just it's a really really fun time to be a uh, a fan made game fan. Is that how honestly I would though, say a part of me feels like there's fans? so many coming out. We're getting like the saturated market of like hacks <laughs> yeah. right now. It's like yeah, we're gonna have like, the, the crash of 2022, <laughs> right? Like is it? Wrong it's hack. kind of funny, yeah, because like a few years ago, we, we would play any game that came out. Like, oh, a new Kaizo game got released. We'll play it. Doesn't matter what it is. And now, because it's getting so saturated and the quality is getting so high, it's like now you're almost like we're almost getting like snooty about it. You know what I mean? Like now it has hit a certain level where it's like, oh, there's now, no custom. Yeah. I'm not playing. Yeah, <laughs> it's like mm, that one was good, but not great. I don't know if it's worth my time. Like you know. <laughs> And to tie that whole thing in together, you know, to back coming back to an earlier thing, any but you can go try these things out. You can go participate. You can Absolutely. get involved if you want to. You know, that's the awesome and great thing about this whole thing. So, uh, I, honestly, I really appreciate getting you all together and and talking Mario and talking uh, Kaizo and all this kind of stuff. It's really um, as a fan and have been a fan for or for so many years. It's 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 awesome to hear the insight and kind of some of the things behind the scenes. So, thank you all for being here. I really do appreciate. It. I can't thank you enough. And you know, thank you guys so much. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, thank you, thanks, guys. And my yeah. final thank you will go to you, the audience. Thank you so much for being here. For if you're watching it live, if you're watching it on YouTube.